Hey guys, Brandon Lee here. I got a new phone to talk about. This is the Vivo X80. So this is gonna be my second sponsored partnership with Vivo for a video. Previously, I made a video about the X60 Pro Plus phone, and now we are a couple generations later and we're up to the X80. So it's got a new processor. It's got a V1 Plus processor. Also, it has an enhanced ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, which means that it detects your fingerprint faster, you have a larger sensor area, and it's more secure. And additionally, it's got some new features for photo and for video. For video in particular, there's a new bokeh mode. It's called cinematic bokeh, which creates the effect of an anamorphic lens. So it gives you oval out of focus areas, oval bokeh behind your subject, instead of the circular bokeh that you normally get. So that's one thing that's kind of cool I'm gonna test out. So the video you're watching is being shot entirely on X80 phones, including this intro. Kobe has one phone, I have another X80, and we're gonna run around this beautiful city in this lovely weather and get lots of test footage. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna film Kobe walking under the L train here. So she's gonna walk into the vanishing point. A vanishing point is the point where all the lines in your composition converge. So she's gonna walk straight toward the background. I'm gonna shoot in 4K, 60p, slow motion. The phone has pretty good stabilization. It will keep your shot pretty steady no matter how you walk, but you can make it even smoother by doing the ninja walk. So what I do is I have one hand holding it like this. Second hand helps to stabilize like that. I lower my body a bit, lower my shoulders. And as I walk, I try to keep my shoulders from going up or down. I try to just not bounce at all as I walk, just like this. start really close like this and then I'll just walk straight back. I'm gonna check, make sure I won't hit anybody. Three, two, one. annoyed by you. Okay, let's try out that cinematic bokeh. Click style and then choose cinematic. Now it added those black bars and it changed my frame rate to 24 frames per second automatically. I just hit record and you can see there is some oval bokeh behind Kobe here and if I move a little closer you should see the bokeh stretch even more.
So a location like this is actually really good for video shooting, whether you're using a phone or any other kind of camera, because there's a lot of distance between the subject and the background. So when you have that distance, then you have more space to play with in your shot. Whereas if you didn't have that distance, like this shot here, much less cinematic, right? Because there's nothing behind me. It's just like that floor right there and this couch. If you're in a good location like this, don't waste it by putting something like that, or like this, uh, behind what you're filming. We're at the Chicago Cultural Center, and I want to get a shot of this really tall ceiling above us. So I'm going to lock my exposure on the ceiling, drop it down a little bit. This is my 0.6 lens, I'm using my wide lens. And then I'm going to film myself, selfie style. So I'm shooting blind. I won't really be able to see what I'm shooting. Okay, let's walk and shoot. stand here so you're gonna center yourself to the doorway and you're gonna look up at the ceiling as you walk through Go. One thing I mention a lot when I teach camera moves is having a defined beginning and ending framing for your shot. So you can think of it kind of like two photographs that are connected by a move. So the first photograph, in this case, would be the shot looking down on Kobe as she looks up. And then the second well-composed image is the shot of the ceiling. Then the camera move that I do just connects those two images through movement. So that's one way that you can make your camera moves look a little bit more professional, a little bit less random. You just plan out a beginning frame and an ending frame, and you figure out how to get from the beginning to the ending smoothly. Kobe's gonna walk down the staircase, and I'm going to use the 1X lens and that gimbal stabilization, and I will walk across Kobe's path. So this kind of camera movement creates a lot of parallax, and parallax is when the foreground and the background move at different rates or different directions, that's parallax. So the more parallax you have in your shot, the more complex the movement appears, and it just makes it more interesting. Two, one, go. All right, I hope you enjoyed watching that footage from the X80. Now I'll just review a little bit what we've seen here. We saw the 0.6x wide lens, the 1x normal lens, and the 2x telephoto lens. Most of the footage you saw was shot in 4K30, but this phone also does 4K60 slow motion. We saw the Zeiss cinematic video bokeh. And one thing that I didn't show you is that this phone actually shoots 8K. So here's an 8K shot, and here it is punched in so that you can see what the resolution looks like at 200%. And now I'm just gonna give you a few thoughts. First of all, my favorite settings for shooting with this phone are 4K, 30P, using the 0.6X lens, because this wide angle lens actually isn't as wide as on other phones, so that means that it's also less distorted. It looks a little bit more natural, the edges aren't as stretched out. So the 0.6X is a lens that I feel like I could use for about 80% of my video shots. And I would shoot it at 30P, and if I wanted that cinematic 24P look, then I would slow it down in post to 80%, and that's what you saw in a lot of the shots here. The wide lens is also really good in low light, which is not always the case with other phones. 
So it's kind of a lens that I feel like I could use most of the time when I'm shooting with the X80. There's a lot of photography features actually that I didn't go into. So if you're a photographer, you might wanna look up other reviews that are more photography centric because it has some really great updates to the portrait camera. It has a gimbal portrait camera, which keeps your portraits more steady. And it has other ways of creating digital bokeh for photography that aren't available in video. Otherwise, the build quality of the phone is really high. It feels really solid. And the battery lasted me more than a full day, even when I was shooting video. So the battery is pretty high capacity. I do have one wish here, and that is for the ability to manually adjust the sharpening. Because while a sharpened image may look good on a smaller phone, an unsharpened image will look better on bigger screens like a computer or a TV. So as a filmmaker, I want people to be watching my videos on all sorts of screens. So that's why I want to be able to adjust the sharpening to my own tastes. So overall, those are my thoughts on the Vivo X80. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And thank you again to Vivo for giving me the chance to make this video. All right, I will see you next time.